We are moving now into our second unit in this course. We began, of course, looking at the five basic moral principles that will structure all of our analysis and thinking throughout the course. Now we're moving into some of the fundamental dimensions of the professional patient relationship. After this unit, we will move to consider issues related to the end of life care. And finally, at the end of the course, we'll raise questions about our system of health care and whether it provides fair and just access uh, to health care to those who deserve it. We will look at a number of issues uh, in this unit uh, where we explore some of the fundamental dimensions of the professional patient relationship. Uh, today, we'll think about honesty and professional honesty with our patients. Uh, certainly one of the legitimate expectations that patients have of their health care providers is that they provide care honestly. Then we will turn to issues related to informed consent and the idea that uh, uh, medical interventions should only be done when patients uh, are informed of the risks and benefits of those treatments and give their voluntary consent. Then we'll look at the issue of patient privacy and the responsibility to protect patient confidentiality. And then towards the end of this unit, we'll think about the role of religious faith, uh, both the faith of uh, healthcare providers and the faith of patients, and how that uh, affects the professional patient relationship. And finally, we'll look at the issue of moral conscience uh, and the moral conscience of healthcare providers and ask what should healthcare providers do when they feel that their own integrity is threatened or challenged by things they're asked to do in the healthcare context. Uh, should they engage in what is called conscientious objection or conscientious refusal uh, to behave as others expect them to uh, because their own conscience tells them they may not? Well, those are the issues in this unit, but let's first think about honesty. Let me say this first about honesty. Let me draw a distinction. A distinction between not lying and telling the truth. Uh, honest people don't lie. They don't say things that are false uh, in an attempt to deceive others. But one can honor the duty not to lie by saying nothing. So beyond that, honesty involves the positive responsibility uh, to tell the truth, to uh, promote understanding um, in others by, by telling them things uh, we know to be true. Uh, just like the distinction we've drawn between non-maleficence and beneficence, we might say here that the, the positive responsibility to tell the truth uh, may be imperfect or, or weaker, uh, that is to say, we would be more critical of the person who tells lies uh, than we would of the person who didn't necessarily uh, speak up uh, to tell the truth. However, uh, as also with regard to beneficence, the positive duty to tell the truth is strong in the professional context, in the professional relationship. It is a part of uh, the legitimate expectation, for example, that patients have of healthcare professionals. A legitimate expectation not, uh, expectation, not simply that healthcare professionals don't lie to them, but also that healthcare professionals tell them the truth, the whole truth, uh, and all the truth that they need to make informed uh, decisions or to participate in informed decision making. So honesty involves not lying, but it also involves, in a healthcare context, telling the truth. Let's think about what lying is or what it means to lie. To lie is to knowingly offer false information with an intent to deceive. I mean, if one offers false information but didn't realize the information was false, uh, then that's hardly telling a lie. That's making a mistake, but it may not be a lie. And it's also important to recognize that there's an element of intention in lying. When we knowingly communicate false information, uh, our intent is to deceive. Let's think a bit about why lying is wrong. I think at a fundamental level, at a most basic level, we can say lying is wrong because it violates 
autonomy. It violates our responsibility to respect people's capacity to think, choose, value, and act for themselves. When we lie to people, inevitably we are attempting to manipulate them through deception. That is to say, we're trying to get them to believe or to do what we want them to do, rather than what they would do if they knew the truth. So lying inevitably involves a violation of autonomy. But secondarily, lying is probably uh, uh, often harmful as well, uh, violating non-maleficence. Certainly in the context of a professional patient relationship, it undermines uh, the, the trust that is essential to that relationship and in that sense is harmful uh, to the patient and the profession. Uh, it also can lead people to make bad decisions, decisions uh, about their health care, for example, that are harmful to them, at least as they would define uh, what's uh, best for themselves. So most fundamentally, lying violates autonomy because it manipulates, but it is also harmful in significant ways. It's important to recognize that there are other ways to deceive people, to manipulate them, and therefore violate their autonomy without telling outright lies. Sometimes we engage in what is called a deceptive silence. When we are deceptively silent, we say nothing to correct someone's erroneous belief precisely because we want them to continue to be deceived in that way so they'll think and believe and do what we want. And we might also sell, tell half-truths, uh, partial truths. Again, not lying, but still telling only enough of the truth to leave a person uh, in a state of erroneous belief precisely because we want them to, be, uh, to, to act upon that erroneous belief. In those situations, we are still uh, engaged in deception and we are uh, still uh, violating people's autonomy. Most ethicists would argue that uh, these are equally morally problematic uh, alongside outright lying. Many scholars have noticed the silence of ancient codes of medical ethics, like the Hippocratic Code, uh, with respect to honesty in professional patient relationships. Uh, the Hippocratic Code, in fact, says nothing about a duty to tell the truth or even a duty not to lie. Moreover, until recent decades, many folks have noticed, uh, the practice of paternalistic lying or deception was quite common. Now, paternalism means to treat someone thought to be childlike with a kind of paternal or parental concern for their welfare. Uh, it involves uh, uh, promoting their welfare or helping to avoid their being harmed, but in a way that disregards uh, their, their own autonomy. That practice of paternalistic lying or paternalistic deception uh, used to be quite common. Fortunately, contemporary codes of ethics uh, have much more to say about these matters. For example, the pharmacy code says that a pharmacist has a duty to tell the truth. And nursing, while there is no mention in the code itself, the commentary on the nursing code talks about the virtue of honesty. Uh, music therapy. Uh, their code of ethics says that a therapist practices with integrity, honesty, fairness, and respect. And the American Medical Association says that a physician shall be honest in all professional interactions. Pay attention to Post and Bluestein's account of the moral basis for truthfulness in the healthcare context on pages 47 and 48 in chapter 4. They appeal, as, as we've already indicated, to autonomy, that uh, healthcare professionals must tell the truth to their patients uh, in order to enable patient self-determination in the healthcare context. They also point to what we would call the principle of fidelity, or the idea of faithfulness uh, to, the, to the patient professional relationship and the trust uh, upon which a, a, a good relationship is based. And finally, they appeal to a consideration related to the principle of beneficence. They argue that productive therapeutic encounters, that is to say, therapeutic encounters that actually uh, work to make uh, patients uh, healthier, uh, better off, uh, depend upon a truthful management of information. All of this points to the duty that healthcare professionals have, not simply to avoid lying, 
but to tell the truth, to promote understanding in their patients such that patients can participate in decision making, such that the trusting relationship is built, and such that those interactions actually benefit patients as, as well as they can. Post and Bluestein note on pages 51 to 53 in chapter 4 that uh, healthcare professionals often provide reasons uh, that attempt to justify the withholding of truthful information. Uh, one such reason uh, appeals to patient autonomy, saying that patients might have waived their right uh, to information. Patients have might have might have been asked, might have asked uh, not to be informed. Uh, in such a situation, we we violate their autonomy by by providing information. Post and Bluestein do say that this is a, a valid uh, set of reasons or a valid reason uh, for withholding truthful information, and they note uh, it's often uh, an aspect of respect for the patient's particular culture. Some cultures uh, do not value patient participation in decision making the way we do, and, and patients from those cultures might well uh, waive their right uh, to truthful information so that they can participate. Uh, a more common reason that patients uh, or that uh, healthcare professionals offer is to shield their patients from harm. Uh, and here the idea would be, if I tell them the truth, um, I will cause them great distress uh, and violate my obligation not to harm them. And related to that, uh, sometimes uh, 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 healthcare professionals will, will argue that, 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 that it, they're, they're justified in not providing truthful information uh, because uh, that non-provision of information will actually promote the, the, the patient's welfare. Uh, for example, the patient may, may make a bad decision uh, if they uh, know about all the risks related to a procedure. So we hold that, withhold that information about risks um, uh, in order to uh, manipulate them uh, to make the choice that is truly best for them uh, in the healthcare professional's view. Now, Post and Bluestein rightly, I think, uh, are, are not convinced by the, these, uh, these appeals to non-maleficence and beneficence as justifications for withholding truthful information. Uh, and they point out it, it, it's often that the healthcare professional is simply uncomfortable uh, and finds the disclosure of uh, especially bad news uh, a very difficult thing for the professional. Uh, and they argue rightly, again, that disclosure, especially of bad news, is one of the healthcare professionals most difficult but also most important clinical tasks. They argue that deliberate vagueness uh, rather than uh, a sustained effort uh, to communicate truth, that deliberate vagueness creates confusion, anxiety, mistrust, and unrealistic expectations among patients. Uh, now, they're not advocating uh, brutal uh, uh, insensitive communication of, of bad news or, or truthful information that have bad components. They, they talk about something called compassionate candor. Now, candor is honesty, but compassion is a, is a, is a, uh, reflects a concern about the feelings, about the distress, about the anxiety of patients in, in hearing bad news. So what they say is that healthcare professionals lean, need to learn compassionate candor. Uh, with regard to the idea that truth is often harmful to patients, they say there's a profound difference between something being distressing and truly objectively harmful. Uh, yes, hearing bad news may be distressing, but very seldom does knowing uh, a, a bad truth actually do harm uh, to the patient. You should also notice uh, their reflections on, on, on the reality that it's sometimes pressure from family members uh, that, that encourages uh, healthcare professionals to be less than fully honest with patients and, and that uh, healthcare professionals should remember that their primary responsibility uh, is to the patient. And then finally, this very interesting comment uh, that Post and Bluestein make in saying that depriving patients of hope is never justified. But often the reality is that what healthcare professionals have to do 
is, uh, is, uh, is help patients redefine what hope means in the face of some uh, really bad truth. Well, well hopefully this has provided you a, a helpful introduction uh, to the importance and the, the challenges of honesty for healthcare professionals in the very difficult context of providing uh, health care to people who are sick, uh, who are anxious, who may be dying. Uh, in such a context, a trusting patient-professional relationship is crucial. In such a context, uh, patients have a legitimate expectation of healthcare care professionals that they will tell the truth with compassionate candor, helping patients to find the hope that is possible for them in these difficult settings. Well, in future presentations, we will look at the requirements related to informed consent, uh, which build upon this idea of the importance of truthfulness or honesty uh, in the healthcare uh, patient professional relationship. And we will look at requirements related to respecting privacy and confidentiality. Those are the topics we will turn to in the coming week. Thank you.